Hi, oh, thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm hoping that you're having a good time at Work Camp Atlanta. Um, you are part of a community. You are part of a large family of designers, developers, people who write code, people who write markup programs, people who lose their microphones. Um, so thank you for coming. My name is Graham, like Stephen said. Um, this is a presentation about folks who are considering transitioning from a designer role to a developing role, people who do want to learn code and those who don't want to learn code, um, welcome. And those who already know code, I'm going to go over some things that will be helpful with design. Um, so in 1997, before my career even started, um, I decided I had two choices. I could go to college or I could not go to college. And for me, that was not really a choice. I had to go to college. I really wanted to. I love education. I love learning. I love, you know, finding out new things. I love exploring. Um, so in 1997, I didn't really have a way to go to college. So instead of going to college, I did a totally, you know, a totally logical and practical thing that a lot of people, probably a lot of you in the room have done. I enlisted in the Marine Corps. Okay, so not everybody has joined the Marine Corps. I did. Um, and um, that was sort of my way to get into college. Um, and I, I think I made the right decision. Uh, it took me five years, and I worked with other people that wrote code. And it was not the code that you're used to. If you do develop and you write code, it's called Morse code. Got a lot of dits and dots and it's silly. But anyways, um, we're not here about that. We're not here about me. We're here about you. We're here about your choices. You chose to come to this discussion, and some of you want to learn code. Some of you already know code, and you want to design. How many designers or non-coders do we have here? You can raise your hand. It's OK. I promise I won't judge. All right. Two. OK. How many people develop? A lot of developers. So are you looking for something that, you might, that might help you design? Yes. OK, so there's a lot of developers. It's usually the other way around. That's fine. Just skip over this stuff I'm going to talk about for uh, writing code. You probably already know HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript. And that's fine. Um, my presentation, I decided instead of showing my design or, or my code or any of my websites, I'd go out and I'd get some other people's designs, some artwork. I thought I'd share that with you. Um, you can actually see some of this artwork on Varg Street in East Atlanta. There's a tunnel on that street, and you can go through it. You can see a lot of cool artwork. Yes, it's graffiti. Yes, it's street art. It's, somebody designed it. Somebody thought it up. And that's pretty much design. Um, let me get through the code. And why do you want to write code for the couple people that want to learn code? Um, it's kind of an open-ended question. If anybody wants to answer that, if they, if they have a specific reason they want to write code, does anybody? No? OK. All right, well, um, let's just set some expectations. If you're going to jump into code, you're going to jump into PHP, HTML, you're going to build websites, you're going to see a slight increase uh, in what you get paid. I know this because I Googled it. There's a lot of research involved in that one. Um, you're going to commit to a life of learning and education. You're going to have to continue continuously um, teach yourself. You might even choose to teach other people, which is great. I highly encourage that. Um, yes, pass on what you know. Um, so you're, you're going to learn more, you're going to get a little bit more money, and you're going to get a, a few more opportunities. Um, so if you're learning code and you design, you're going to have another skill set. And when you go into an interview and they say, do you design, tell them a little bit, but you know code. Because that way, remember the Google research, yes, okay, you'll get more money. That's key. All right. Um, that's, uh, we're here to learn. We're, we're here on our, our weekend, just like Chris said. And um, do you lose, lose audio? No, we're good. Um, so just like Chris said, we could be doing anything on a Saturday. 
but instead we're here learning. So kudos to you, you did good, you made a good choice, you're using your time wisely. Um, <clears throat> so the why, why we want to learn code is because you want to build out some designs or you want to build a website and you want to share that with other people. And when you do share, you have a, an immense responsibility because you are publishing. You are publishing content on the internet and anybody can go on it and anybody can see it. When you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, any of the th many things that you can find on the internet, you are posting things, you are publishing, you are an author. You are an author with um, responsibilities, responsibilities to others, um, responsibility to yourself. And if you are going to open a business and do business, people are going to see what you've published. So you are an author, but you're also telling a story and whether it's with code or whether it's with design, you are an author. Um, if you want to learn code, I want to encourage you to try to adapt and accept a, a new mindset, a thought process. And that is that you don't know everything. It is a learning process and it's a little bit, it's involved, it takes a lot of time. Sometimes there's, there's folks that can pick it up. They can pick it up quickly, that's great. If that's you, awesome. If it's not you, that's also awesome. If you can't get code, if you can't get HTML and CSS, and some of the other things down in 100 days, keep going. You don't have to do it in 100 days. So 100 days of code is great. That's awesome. But if you want to go past that, that's, that's really good too. Um, there's, I'm going to go over a few things that will help you. Um, and you can check that out. And that will help you learn. There, everything that I'm presenting today is free. So you can go on there. You're, you don't have to worry about trying to find out what's the catch. All right, free for 20 days. Ah. Um, so when you are learning, Understand that you can be wrong. And understand that you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail, even. You can make mistakes. You have to make mistakes in order to make a success. So be wrong, learn from it. And then if you do make a mistake, make a mistake in a safe environment, or sandboxing, as we call it. Do it on a testing environment. And make sure you test your stuff before you put it up on the internet. You can do that locally, or you could, or you could do it online. Um, there's, when you're using WordPress, you can uh, elect to publish a page, or you can elect to just view uh, what it would look like. So always check your work before you publish it. You'd think that that's common sense and everybody here does it, but sometimes we forget, sometimes we have that project manager's like, Where's, where's my stuff? I need, I need it yesterday. So don't let them <laughs> persuade you. Don't let them make you make mistakes. If you do fail, fail forward. And then repeat the process. Repeat what you do. It, it, if you have to fail again, if you have to make more mistakes, do so. Um, so as authors, um, you're going to be building websites. And you're going to be um, you're going to be designing, and if, the, if, if you're here to learn more about design, we'll get to that in just a minute. But for those of you who are wanting to learn more code, um, ask for help. Ask, find somebody that can help you out. Um, find somebody that you can kind of latch on to and learn from them. Okay, uh, you can tell I'm going back to learning because it's important. Um, for code, um, that mindset of learning new things, um, understand that what you're learning is not rocket scientist or not rocket science. It is a bit tricky. It's not easy. It's a new language. Um, learning a new language in school, you might have picked it up. You might have just neglected it. Not you know, you could learn Spanish and then not go to Spain, and you kind of let it go. That's okay. Um, but code, you have to learn it, and you have to keep learning it, and there's new things. Um, but because it is a new language, it's a, it's a bit hard, and especially when you're talking to a computer. 
A computer can only tell you so much. It can only tell you your error codes are here or there. But if it doesn't tell you how you made the error, you might need somebody to help you. So that's the importance of asking for help and also looking for help. Look for help in the right places. There's, there's a, quite a few uh, websites. You can go on to, um, you can go on the internet, you can find pretty much anything you need to. Uh, and, and I'll get to those in just a second. Uh, logic is something that we use in code. If you write something and publish it and it doesn't look right, then it's wrong. It's either right or it's wrong when you publish it. Um, hopefully you get it right before you publish it. So when you're going through code and you're going through stuff and it doesn't work, it's wrong. Logic. All right. So Free Code Camp is one of the sites that you can go to. You can start up uh, an education you know, path. And because you're here, you want to learn more about your career. You want to learn about a new path. That's one of the things. And also, by the way, at the end of this presentation, the slides are available on a website, which I'll, I'll put up there so that you guys, if you're scurrying to get this before I go to the next slide, don't worry about that. Um, so free, I'm sorry? What uh, website? It's going to be at the last slide. I'll put it up there. And it'll have all these slides. Absolutely. If there's any other questions also, if, feel free to ask. Um, Alistapart.com is a great site. Um, that's where I learned about responsive web development. Anybody know uh, Mark Hote? No? OK. So he wrote a really great article about responsive web design in CSS and how to make your sites responsive. I highly recommend that. Um, but that's just one of many, many articles on alistapart.com. Developer.mozilla.org and w3schools.com, those are two great resource websites that you can go and you can find answers. Um, so yes, absolutely check that out. Sorry, I'm getting loud. All right. So, that's awesome. HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, some of those things are totally foreign to you, but a lot of you raise your hands, you're already developers, you know what that stuff is. That's fine. For those of you who have no idea what that stuff is, you kind of need it to build websites. You sort of, <laughs> kind of, just a little bit. Um, CSS is huge because that's everything forward facing, it's built on top of HTML. PHP takes that markup scenario and it, and it really injects it with a lot of more power. Do you have a question? No. Okay, JavaScript is like your programming, like PHP, that you can do functions and you can make variables and you can do that sort of awesome stuff. And this is kind of what you need for web development along with WordPress. And when I got into WordPress, which is 2000, 2012, um, I, didn't, I didn't know anything about it. So a lot of the, the people that I meet don't really know anything about code. They don't know about WordPress. They don't know about what you can do with it. And uh, a gentleman named Calvin helped me out at work. He said, listen, you're asking me all these questions, and it's really annoying. I have a job to do. I'm like, sorry. And he said, go to, go to the, the codex. And I have, had no idea what he's talking about. I was completely clueless. But I checked it out, and it's got a lot of answers on there. So if you are looking for answers, which I said earlier, you should be searching for things, searching for the answers, and that's how you educate. If you can educate yourself, that's it's phenomenal. You need that. You need WordPress.org. So go to Codex, check that out. You can learn about the core. You can learn about themes. You can learn about plugins. I've worked on all three. I focus on themes. Um, I've made a plugin. It's like three lines of code. It's sad, but it's. It's mine. I use it. I love it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with admitting that you're sad. Um, but I've probably made 50 themes. Um, I've customized the core, which you shouldn't do. Whatever. <laughs> I did it anyways. Um, and it's fun. I love WordPress. That's why I'm here. Um, so w where does that leave you? Okay. You are wanting to learn code. I, I honestly want you to learn code too. I want you to learn it so hard that um, 
you'll be able to talk to somebody. And <laughs> when you're talking to them, you start talking about divs. And, oh, my float isn't canceling. What do I do? And somebody just looks at you like you're absolutely crazy. I want that for you. Um, I want that because it's, it's then you're like, oh, no, what else do I say? Because I've completely lost the person. And I'm sure because everybody, a lot of you raised your hands. You probably have talked to people about code, and they have no idea what you're talking about. That's OK. It's OK if you're speaking a different language to somebody. Um, we need you. We need you if you are a designer and you think differently. We need you. We need your creativity and we need your determination. There may be a scenario, and I hope this happens to nobody in this room, where somebody that you know or you like question what you do. And they will say, are you sure about this code thing? Are you sure about HTML? Why, why do you want to learn this? I, I, don't, I don't think you did a good job on that project. Are you sure that code is really the answer? Um, I hope it doesn't happen to anybody. But people you love, people you know, your friends, they might question that. And be ready for that. Have a process to deal with that. I think Chris probably said it better than I did, Chris Lemma. Um, his presentation was great. Um, but have a way to just mentally work through that. The people are saying this because they don't know. They don't know that you are speaking a different language and they don't understand that probably they're insulting you in the work and the hours and weeks that you've put into your designs. So if you're a designer, come learn code. Learn that you need to keep learning. Learn that it's a different mindset, it's a language, and it takes a lot of patience. So please be patient with other people. Please be patient with yourself. Okay. So, this is Clark Street that I was talking about earlier. This is where all that artwork is at. All that good stuff up there. You can walk up and down either side of it, and it's it's great. You'll meet Carg Street. It's Carg. It's Krog. Sorry, Krog. Correct. Krog Street. Hmm? C. Or, I'm sorry. K R O G J G. G. K-R-O-G. Yeah, it's East Atlanta. I um, can't remember the name of that town, but it's, it's near the Beltline. It's groovy. Check it out. Absolutely highly recommend that. If you like graffiti, you'll be there for quite a while. Old Fourth Ward? Okay. So a lot of, a lot of developers, a lot of people that already know code. Um, what about design? Why do you need to know design? Does anybody want to answer that? Well, it's been a pain point for me because the issue I'm having when I try to take on a client is they have no idea what they want it to make it to look pretty. I guess I mean, like to make it look pretty so that the customer and their customers are happy. Okay, thank you. She said so that it could, your website can look pretty or the project can look pretty. So it looks better. Basically, yes. There's two different distinctions between art and design. Art is expression. And that comes in many forms. You could have art through music. You could have art through um, poetry. Code is poetry. Um, but art is a much more broader term. Design is art with constrictions. It is, um, it is different than art because you're trying to sort of sell or persuade somebody to do something using art. It's a solution and it's typically used to sell a product, a service, an idea. Um, but art is going to be bigger. It's, it's going to cover a lot more. Um, Instead of actually trying to define design, I decided I would plagiarize and just take Mike Montero's definition. Um, this is from one of his books. Check him out on YouTube. Um, design is, will accomplish that. It will make your sites look better. It will make your advertisements look better. It will make your pamphlets that you're 
you know, your school organization or something that you devote time to. It'll make it look better all, all around. There's some concepts that you need to kind of grasp. Because a lot of you probably, uh, probably have already jumped into Photoshop. Anybody here has used Photoshop? Couple? Just about everybody. Okay. So, yes. You, while, while you're designing, you need to really consider what you're trying to express. Or you could consider what you think your audience wants to hear. Okay? Um, take into account what you need and what you're selling and use emotion. If you use emotion, you'll be able to control your audience. You'll be able to, to hold them and you'll be able, I hate to say this, but you're going to persuade them and it is persuasion. So design has a bit of persuasion in it. You need that. You, we're not trying to, to trick somebody to get their social security number so we can get a better tax return because it's somebody else's tax return or something like that. You're just trying to get them to understand why they need this product. It's kind of helpful, all right? Um, I'm going to welcome you all into the, the world of design. Now, when you're in development mode, you take somebody else's design and then you kind of process it. You have a, a process for building out sites or, or anything else. But in design, somebody comes to you and says, hey, I think it would be great if, if you give me this design about, it, it's going to be a banana. Um, it, it, it's going to be a banana, but it's going to be the best banana. It's going to be like, we, we need this ad for a banana, and we want something, can you, can you give it to me in like 10 minutes? Okay? I know you know what a banana is, and I know you can go to Shutterstock, but get me the best banana, and get it to me like really fast. And I can almost guarantee that you will go through something similar to this. You will have, okay, well, there's the banana. And then you show it to your, your client. You show it to your boss. And the boss says, that's a great banana. I like it. But could you put some more wow in that? Or maybe let's change the shape of the banana. And let's call the banana Banano. Because nanotechnology and bananas, they go great. It's just... It's going to be awesome, this design, I can really feel it. All right, so by this time, you're kind of, you have a headache. You're tired, you're thinking about going home. Um, the banana, maybe we could get into Photoshop and we could change the hue to make it a blue banana. Or maybe we could add the human element and a dancing banana. Has anybody seen that on the internet? All right, never mind. It's a little... And, yeah, the peanut butter jelly top, peanut butter. Okay, so there's that. That's from the internet. That's why we love the internet, because you have cats and dancing bananas. Um, also Twitter. Um, at, this, at this point in the stage, you keep going back to the client and showing them all these things, and you're like, okay, I'm pouring my heart into this project, even though I don't believe in it, it's a banana. They're, they're going to they're gonna keep going. They're going to keep going, and then you just fire the client. No, I'm kidding. There's actually, there is a point where your, your client will say, oh my God, that's fantastic, when all you've done was change the font weight from like 800 to 200. Yes, yes, I did it. I made my client happy. So that's the design process. Um, it's, a, it's a bit frustrating. So be ready for that. Developers, logical people. We build things, we know if it's gonna work, or if it's gonna fail, and we, we have that fun time with our computers, and our computers give us this verification yes this is good no no keep trying oh that's good but in design you really don't have that um, and when you're building or you're creating things um, try to keep some of these concepts in in mind um, contrast you're going to try to contrast to bring focus to something like you could have a blurry background but you could have a really sharp text people are going to draw their, their eyes are going to get drawn to that sharp text you could use color also. If I go back, you can see the colors being used here. There's no, there's no uh, blurriness, but there's, you know, your eyes really brought into these colors. They're brought into, does anybody know what that font is? No? No. All right, well, I'll, I'll come back. We'll follow up, get the answer to that question. Um, alignment, so 
if you have text over here and you have a column over there and your text is great but it's not aligning with something else um, because you have margins or you have padding that doesn't belong there, um, you'll, you'll, you'll have a client. You will have a client that says, no, 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 no. This is all wrong because like, of a five pixel difference. Um, just be ready for that because like anything else, you just have to keep going. Repeat the sort of things that you build. So if you're using blue and then you're using a lighter blue and you use a dark blue in the text or the headers, repeat that. Keep using those blues and maybe use a complementary color. If you're using contrasting color, you have to repeat contrasting color. So repetition is part of that. All right, GIMP, Inkscape, and Scribus. A lot of you use Photoshop. You can use a free tool, it's called GIMP. I'll put a link to it. It's actually already up on the internet. When I get to the end of the slideshow, you can go grab that for free. Yes? Yep. Yeah. There's, there's a couple qu questions in, in, in your question. Her question was, she uses Photoshop and it's, it's easy. Um, GIMP is designed a little bit, uh, actually a lot like photo, Photoshop, so give that a try. A, B, um, do not use Photoshop for development. Go to wordcamp.org, learn, learn code. Um, now, I know that there's probably a tool that you can push the button and it'll take all your designs and then push it out into HTML, oh, CSS. No, sorry, Is that I think I, I asked him a question wrong. So I, so I am a coder. Okay, you write code. Okay. Great. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so your question is how do you go from Photoshop into a responsive design? Yeah, Correct? Like, yeah. What would you recommend as the best practice for, I guess, like mocking up a web, like a web design and using mobile? Keep doing what you're doing. You can use Photoshop, you can use GIMP, you can use whatever you want. You can use, um, uh, I'll just, in just a second. Uh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. So you said DNX? Um, is Adobe XD. Adobe XD is and what you should check out. You can like publish your design so you can test it on your phone. Like, yeah, so it is a great response to like uh, Photoshop for prototyping. Okay, so, yeah, so, yeah, so that essentially, yeah. I guess, was the answer to my question. Adobe XD, great. That's a great point, and, and I think with experience, you, you get a better understanding. My, um, my div has certain, or I'm sorry, my row has certain divs, and they float, etc. One's on top, one's, then I got two columns below it. Which column goes first, which, which one falls underneath the other using responsive. Dig into CSS, find out what XD is doing. Is it DX or XD? It's XD. XD, it's sorry. So, And when, when you're looking at it in the browser, um, I want to say it's shift, control, I. It's going to bring up your code inspector, and you can see what's happening. Okay, and you can roll over the content in your browser, and it will highlight it for you. So that's another tool that you can use in, in both Firefox, uh, Chrome, and, and the other browsers. There's a code inspector in, in all the browsers. Um, so XD, check that out. Um, and I highly recommend using uh, a, a, a sort of building code with Adam.io is a great tool that I use. Is that 
Uh, you use that? Hebrew. I'm sorry? Atom.io, it's, Atom is, is a, it's a word processor that shows you your code, and it'll show you your PHP, your HTML, CSS. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right. So, um, again, my name is Graham, and uh, like I said, I, I joined the military, military back in 1997. The, the good news is I, I got out in 2002. I was honorably discharged. That's a good thing. <laughs> and then uh, I, went to, I went to college, I gave myself a mission. And then I, I accomplished it, I got a degree. And then uh, you know, I had to work my way out of design and into development. And I had to tell people that um, this is where you can find the, these slides. And this, this is all right there. Um, are there any other questions? Yes. Let me go back. Yes. That one right there? So GIMP is kind of like a Photoshop, but it's open source. Yes. Inkscape is kind of like Illustrator, but open source. So you have a tool for making raster images and bitmap images. Kind of like Photoshop and Illustrator. Scribus is kind of like your uh, Adobe InDesign. It's like a, a page layout system. Um, sorry, I didn't, I didn't repeat the question. The question was, what is Scribus? Scribus is going to be what I just said. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry? Correct. Um, so his question was, this is like Adobe. Um, it's sort of, it's not really as, as powerful as Adobe products. But GIMP is going to get you a, really, a lot of good results. If you're working with photography, you're not going to get like batch processing. You're not going to get some of the other really cool tricks that you're going to get from Photoshop. But you are going to get a lot of the tools. That, like you can do clone stamping. You can do selection. You can do all these things. It's going to be a little bit cumbersome. I'm actually in the process of adapting that in, into my, my flow, my work process. Inkscape, awesome. I don't know a lot about Scribus. I actually haven't used it that much. So I'm kind of half suggesting this. I'm not fully endorsing it. But the other two, I fully endorse Scribus. Um, sorry, I fully endorse GIMP and Inkscape. Does that help? Is good? OK. Any other questions? Yep. OK. Yes. OK. a great question. Her question was, um, she wants to learn more about theme development. And I, I think it's a great question because I actually have an answer. All right. Go to Codex. Let's see. Is it in here? Go to wordpress.codex.org. Yeah, you're going to go to the Codex, and you're going to search for theme developer guide. Go to Theme Developer Guide. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a lot more, a better, better understanding than my 30-minute presentation. It's, it's a pretty big topic. All right? It's going to have your file structure. You're going to know like, what, what are the requirements for a theme, which is the style.css and the index.php. To learn more about PHP, you can go online. I would suggest go to Free Code, free code Camp. Whatever that one was before, <laughs> go to that one. And uh, if they don't have a course on PHP, just, just learn how to learn and, and find that. I thought PHP was always a back-end language. I know it's it is. Front-end yep. So PHP, PHP has, it's built on top of HTML, and it's going to speak to your servers. It's going to use MySQL. And it's going to do what you need it to do, or what WordPress needs it to do, which is update the database. Oh, great. Because yeah, uh, I actually work as a Google Python, and then at my job, Python, and I do some PHP. So you, you work at a zoo with snakes? <laughs> Thank you, folks. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, I, that's funny that you said that. 
Thank you all for coming. I'm going to just drop off some candy, and I know if... Next slide. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Um, I'm passing out candy. Oh. Sorry about that. Yes, I'm passing out candy because you're going to have to review me. So when you go to, <laughs> so when you go to my presentation, is it my my slides that rock or is it? That that didn't go the way we wanted it to. That's your, your thing. That is my my website and my company. Um, yes, thank you for helping her out with that. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, I like to recommend, I personally think, oh, because back end can get sometimes kind of complex, I like to recommend avoiding the resources. There's a site called Udemy.com. They actually have uh, a tutorial which actually helps me understand WordPress or PHP, because it's one thing to know PHP or even HTML, CSS, JavaScript, but learning how WordPress PHP syntax and also how to use it with WordPress. And wait till they have a sale because you can get that every single month. For 10, like 1099. So it's U D E M Y dot com. Can take some of these and pass them down? Does anybody have any other questions? I'd love to help if I could. Uh, I got chocolate, so take some and pass it along, because it's open source. Uh, if you're allergic to uh, if you're allergic to peanuts, don't take chocolate. Obviously, That's handy. thank you. Awesome. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Yes, go ahead. For JavaScript, <laughs> JavaScript. All right. He'll, he's, the question was about JavaScript, and this other gentleman is going to help him out. But um, I've, I think there's a JavaScript library called NPM. Does anybody else use NPM? No JS. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. The, the answer was. Okay. This this is outside my realm, actually. So I, I would not be the perfect person to ask that question. Going back to my slides, ask questions, but sometimes you might ask somebody that doesn't know the answer. So this is one of those times. Thank you all. Any other questions?